the uh, email board <laughs> Wait a minute until I get this cookie. <laughs> yes. Here. Sharon Morton. Here. Gloria Johnson. Here. 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 Thanks to the alternates from uh, South Wash and Inver Grove, and we'll wait for the South St. Paul rep. Uh, you greet her when she gets I certainly her will. Uh, thank you. Uh, could I get a motion to approve the uh, order of this evening's agenda? So moved. Mike, or can I use my playground voice? <laughs> okay, so um, thank you for this opportunity to come in. Um, I'd like to introduce to the board, and she probably doesn't need much of an introduction to this community, but Jan Brudvig, if you can join us up here, please. Um, so, board, Jan is someone that, um, she first came to Harambe as a parent, <laughs> stayed as a volunteer, and now she's family. <laughs> um, and she has been with Harambe for very many years. I, you probably could tell better than I can, as, I for think, at least as long as I've been here. I think my son was in the second class to come through. He yeah. was in kindergarten the, so second, in the second year. The second year that Harambe that the school was, was in. in the, so, so your son is now how old? 21. 21. <laughs> <laughs> and she's been coming back every year. Um, almost every day. She does um, the beautiful gardens that you see out front. Um, so she designs, plants, tends <coughs> those gorgeous gardens. She works in our media center. Um, she helps with dismissal. Um, she really is um, here a lot and very <laughs> appreciated by many. Um, so we thought this was a good opportunity as we're, um, she's been here as Tri-District. She's been here as Harambe. And now, as we make this transition to Roseville, we're hoping that she stays with us. I hope so, too. <laughs> as an extraordinary volunteer. And um, so Jan is not one who loves the spotlight. <laughs> um, but I, I've just been so grateful, and I know our community has been so grateful for her many years of service to this school, um, that I wanted to mark this with something special. And Jan doesn't know about this, but... Um, when you plant a garden, sometimes you plant annuals, and they grow and bloom, and they're very beautiful for that one year. But sometimes you plant the perennials, those flowers that keep coming back <coughs> over and over and over again. And that's Jan for us. She's, <laughs> she's our perennial volunteer. And so we are going to have a special annual award for students called the Jan Brudvig oh. Service Award. <laughs> okay to recognize students that give back to their community in the same way that Jan has given to our community these very many years. So this year will be the first year of the Jan Brudvig Service Award. So I'm hoping you can come <coughs> present it at our fifth grade graduation. I know the kids would be thrilled to have you there. So on behalf of the Harambe community, the East Metro Integration Board, and all of our students and staff, please join me in thanking Jan Brudvig. <laughs> grateful that you all let me come back oh. <laughs> and, uh, and spend a lot of time working with Deborah and everyone else so I'd like to thank you for letting me come back. Wow. <laughs> you want to go further where a couple other spots <laughs> Well, no, this pretty much keeps me busy. <laughs> you did a great job. Oh, well, thank you. And I'm wondering if you would allow us to do a photo with maybe our board chair, our superintendent. I'll snap the picture if you. You've got to be in it too. Oh well. Well, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> Thank you. 
sugar. Let's start in that chopping. <laughs> and she better not give you five hours either, right? We were, um, I was uh, surprised to see Jan's announcement in the, in the packet, and so I just wanted to say thank you to Jan again, and, and thank you in particular. Um, I understand that you went to some extra effort to make sure you're around for this coming month, which we really appreciate all the help we will get sorting out the next month's um, uh, issues. And then I also saw um, we had been expecting to have some crosswinds conversation here, but that that's likely to be at a special meeting um, in July, which sounds just peachy. There's enough to talk about Harambe today. But I did want to make a request that you consider, um, you may already be doing this, but consider holding that meeting at crosswinds. Um, since most of the agenda is about crosswinds, that might make it easier for some crosswinds families to be a part of that meeting since they're familiar with that building and I don't know that everyone's made it here. So that one request for the special meeting next month if we have it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, this evening's consent agenda minutes of the April 17th, 2013 regular meeting accounts payable and the Resources staffing update. Could I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Thanks, Lori. And a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And uh, discussion reports and other non action items. First, we have the summer youth program update. In your packet. As I have informed you um, in previous board meetings on um, March 18th and April 4th, curriculum leaders and integration specialists and two superintendents joined together um, for uh, two full days of planning uh, programs and services that youth would be participating in both this summer and those that they felt would be um, appropriate to um, engage in for the 13th so we had a lot of data that was brought to the table, a lot of experiences that um, have people have had in various organizations, and we um, then, once all of those ideas were on the table, we needed a person that was going to help us pull this all together and make, make it all happen. And that happened to be Kelly Nelson, who pulled, helped us pull all of this uh, information together um, and uh, provide extraordinary services to our member districts um, from, uh, in fact, all of our districts to um, provide um, the coordination of services that were needed. And Kelly is with us tonight to talk about the programs that are in your packet that are being provided to all of our member district students and youth for those who have signed up for various programs to talk more about that and for you ask any questions you might have about it. Um, what we are learning from the programs that have already launched is some are more of a hit than others, as you would well imagine, because some of this has been experimental. And so those that are going to be uh, found to be more beneficial, um, have the focus that our member districts are going to have desire to have around integration and academics, will be moving forward. Those programs and services some that have not seemed to be quite the fit would maybe die off and not be seen again. So uh, a lot of that is yet to be determined. So with that, Kelly, I'm going to uh, introduce you and present the programs for this evening. Thank you all. Thanks for having me back. I figured you've seen a lot of 
numbers, and we had the discussion the last time I was able to join you to tell you a little bit about the programs on which we were focusing, and our process in advertising it out to all 10 member districts so that every district had access to the various programs we were offering. At this point, I thought it might be fun to hear a little bit from the students who have participated, as well as some of the parents who have participated, as well as some of the programs we've worked with. Now, I do have to say we had a little technological glitch. I'm sorry to say I had a couple of video clips to share, but those are not going to happen. But hopefully the quotes will kind of capture um, just the feelings that folks are having. Our programming started the first week kids were out of school, so June 10th is when some of our camp programs first started. And so I've captured just a snapshot of a few of those opportunities, and I'll be open for questions that you might have on any of the details afterwards. Okay, so one of the camps that we worked with was the Sana Foundation. The Sana Foundation is run by Tony Sana, who's a major, former Major League Soccer player, who's developed an, a youth service organization that's about teaching youth about soccer and cultural competency, as well as how to access athletics in college. And he put on <coughs> his staff three one-week sessions all around St. Paul. They've been attended, they're going to be attended by over 100 students each week, so serving 300 students Central Integration Districts. This is a picture of the kids just last week playing. This is a parent who was talking about her experience of it, and one of the things that she captures is the idea that quite often, that not everyone is able to afford great summer programming. And so the fact of the matter is she's actually a, a grandma who's, um, whose grandson has been able to participate and would not have otherwise been able to participate um, because of financial reasons for going to camps. The other pieces that we provided is regional bus transportation to all of the camp opportunities that we're offering so that families don't find that transportation or cost to be a barrier to getting to these opportunities. Urban Wilderness Canoe Adventures. I was lucky enough to attend last week, actually, which was wonderful. Um, this was one of those opportunities where we had, we had 30 students come from multiple districts. They made lifelong friends already in two days. Um, the incredible staff of Wilderness Inquiry and the National Park Service come together for this program, Urban Wilderness Canoe Adventures, where they really focus on ensuring that kids who might not otherwise have the opportunity get to experience the great outdoors. So I saw a group of students learning how to create a, make a fire. They all got to canoe together. And so there's 16 kids in a canoe together figuring out how to make it go forward and not <laughs> splash each other. Um, they tolerated the bugs. Everybody was so happy. I received this email, and, and I quoted directly. I just found it very cute. Holy cats, what a fabulous experience. Thank you so much. My son is loving every minute of this. And so it was a really cool um, experience. And so the kids were also learning history of uh, the uh, of the Native Americans in the area of Fort Snelling. They also were learning about, it is tied, all the work of Urban Wilderness Canoe Adventure is tied to the standards and ensuring there was stuff done about history as well as environmental responsibility. Stepping Zone Theater Camp. So Stepping Zone Theater is a neighborhood theater in St. Paul that is really known as the preeminent um, organization for training young actors. And I do, I did notice that actually, I know Karambe is doing some work with Stepping Stone Theater as well. So we were able to send through EMID 30 students to different camps throughout the month of June. This is just the beginning of a partnership that we hope will continue to be really fruitful with Stepping Stone Theater. Again, busing is provided to families as well as lunch to families who might not otherwise have the opportunity. Stepping Stone is one of those camps that is can be um, quite pricey for a week for, for folks to attend. We also make sure that they're for a um, full day experience, so families that need to work are able to ensure that their kids have quality experiences throughout the whole day that they're at work. So this is a quote from the education uh, coordinator at Stepping Stone Theater. Together we are igniting a passion in these students that will motivate them to stay active and collaborate with their peers through the arts. How exciting. Even has been a great help in promoting our mission to students. People have been excited to learn more about St. Paul Public Schools, Enid, and their partnership with us. All right, so these are some videos, and I'm so sad that they're not gonna they're not gonna come up because right now we're in the middle. Today was the second day of a three-day media camp experience. And media is intentionally spelled this way with the idea of student as center. What is important to you? What is your story? How are you gonna share it? And today I was fortunate to be able to be with the whole group who you can see up there. We're serving 50 students during this camp opportunity. They got to meet four producers and the filmmakers from, um, from Twin Cities Public Television, folks who have done independent documentary work. Um, one of the women who was there presenting today has done a, a nationally known work about Jane Goodall. And she was working with these students who got to present their ideas for documentaries and their media projects. And so the groups came together, they presented 
and I'll give them feedback. And the hope is by the end of the camp, they'll be able to produce something themselves. And both these students are sixth graders. You would never know. They're so composed and just talked about how they've enjoyed this camp experience so much because it's been productive. They've got to think together and really understand the importance of their voice in solving some of the issues of today. One of the things I loved as a, as a parent was hearing about how they feel that parents are so frustrated with student use of technology, but quite often we're frustrated with them while we're texting. So I thought that was a really interesting thing to remember, that quite often we focus on what kids are doing and how they're distracted by technology, but as adults we're doing some of the same things. So, out of the mouths of babes, I think it was a, a good learning experience. Como Zoom Camps is another um, organization that we partnered with, and again, um, it's, it, it's a camp that has existed for quite a while, but it is prohibitively expensive for a lot of families, so we were able to partner with Como Zoom to have 30 students a week attend Como Zoom camps um, during the month of June. From this parent, wow, lunch and bus and camp. I'm so impressed with the comprehensive services to make this program come off for St. Paul Public School students as well as even students. We would not have otherwise been able to afford the Zoom camp, and my son is really excited about this opportunity. The Avid Service Learning Camp was something that arose organically out of a group of teachers in South Washington County who are Avid involved, and they really um, wanted to make sure that they got their students inspired and excited for service learning projects. So they invited Catherine Berger Kay, who is widely considered the authority on service learning, to come and work with not only with students but also with faculty members from across all of our EVA districts were invited to attend as well. So she did a two-day workshop for teachers and then it worked with the students as well. The students are also working with camp assistants, which are some of our older students who have been hired to help out at all the different opportunities we're offering. Those groups are working together to create service projects that we hope we'll, they'll bring back to their home districts and do throughout the school year. Now, Camp EMA, this is so exciting. So this is something that was, again, this was organically grown out of EMA member services. Um, this is something that the Youth Executive Board has wanted to do for many years, is to put together their own leadership opportunity so that they can come together um, as a team, figure out their own leadership styles, and how to bring some of that learning back to their districts. So this was a three-day opportunity last week. It was, in the, it was at Voyager um, Campground in Mount, Minnesota. And I also had the opportunity to see some of the kids after they've returned, and they're so invigorated by what they'd like to what they'd like to tackle next. What's their issue that they'd like to focus on? One of the mothers had said, "My daughter had a terrific time and could not stop talking about the life lessons learned in communication and in appreciating differences." I saw a glow in her eyes that was not there at the end of the school year. She's really looking forward to the rest of the summer. Community, unity, equity, diversity. Different people coming together to form one community. It was a life-changing experience. The activities were very serious. Camp Eden was on point. The E exercise, educational equity ecosystem simulation, caught me off guard and was very, very good. I feel really empowered. So there were uh, 50 students that were able to attend that opportunity. Okay, so that's just an that's a snapshot of some of the things that have happened so far, and it's only been two weeks. Um, multiple of the camps that we've offered in the packet have reached full capacity. Those include Camp Enid, the Pay It Forward Tour, which just left on buses this afternoon, National Youth Leadership Training, where we have two students from each district attending a training about how to be leaders within their own school communities, uh, Homo Zoo, Stepping Stone Theater, Arts Us, Sana Sacker, and our Camp Assistant Program. Through all these opportunities, we're going to serve nearly 2,000 students this summer. And we've really developed and invested in some strong partnerships going forward. So with that, I will see if there's any questions. Yes. Well, that's a great question. It is 2,000 participants, but we were really mindful of ensuring that we didn't duplicate because we wanted to, we know it's a relatively small number of students when we're considering the size of all of our districts, so we did not want to have students repeat you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd just like to compliment you on um, the speed at which you were able to put these together. <laughs> it was quite quick. This it was spring. a great turnaround. And, um, you're amazing. It's the uh, people I've been able to work with. Well, thank you for that.
my leadership, but it's really amazing. Um, secondly, I'm wondering uh, two things. How you uh, publicized the camp availability through the 10 EMID districts. Yes. And then the second question would be, um, I, I'm just noticing uh, some of them, all 10 participated, five of the 10, um, a few, two of the 10. Sure. So I'm just wondering, how did that work out? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and, and to your point with the, with the shorter timeline, some of these things are things that we're going to account for in future years. Um, because we literally, I, I think that we started talking about this March 18th, right. and originally um, our first proposals, our first look at this was early April. So with that in mind, what we did was I worked with our integration leaders in each of the districts. We asked them which opportunities they were most interested in for their students, because all different districts have different philosophies about whether they'd like to go deep, whether they'd like to focus on a school. Districts are all different sizes, so we wanted to be equitable about how we approach that and allow folks to help make that decision. Once we knew which opportunities they'd most like to offer, we created flyers for each district that were then, we then encouraged the district to dis distribute them as they saw fit. So for some, it was sending flyers home in backpacks. For some, it was posting it. For some, it was hand identifying students for different opportunities. So again, it's this, it's the idea that there's no one size fits all um, approach within districts. And that's where you'll see some of the different numbers. So for some, it, it, and it can be deceiving because for some, they advertised it widely, but nobody did. And for some, they just really wanted to focus on a, a couple of students that, and families that they thought would most benefit. So that's why the numbers are, it can be a little bit off in that. But we made sure that every district knew all the different opportunities available to them and that it was something that each could choose to participate in. I see. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. And we've, we've learned some things along the way as well. Like we went to regional busing a little bit later on in the process because we were running against a lot of really tight deadlines. Mm -hmm. Trying to establish you know, bus routes within a district yeah. When they needed it a month in advance for summer programming, was, it was a little bit of a challenge. But we found some really creative ways to get around those challenges and, and offer really high quality programming as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment or questions, Karen? Just one, I know we had some criticism about using money in this particular way. Yes. I went to our diversity person and was very thrilled to know that it wasn't just going to be thrown out there for mm -hmm. anybody, but that it was looking for special students, families. Them be 
media is a huge part of their lives. And so to have that opportunity to meet filmmakers and to understand that career path was really, really intrigued them. Um, the Science Museum is offering a camp later in the summer. So big name um, organizations that have a lot of a great reputation and a lot of respect also got a lot of attention. So the Science Museum camp filled up in maybe two weeks. So did, you, did that answer your question? Any others? I just have one comment. I, I uh, opened my email the other day, and uh, one of our high school students had attended Camp Ebit, and she said, um, I'd like to get a group of my friends together to work on the levy in the fall. Uh, by the way, what made you think that you would ever pass a levy? <coughs> Three questions two years ago. So she'd obviously done a little bit of research, mm -hmm. but she asked for follow-up so at least momentarily for this uh, young lady, she wanted to take her experience there and actually help right. us with the, the levy in the fall. So um, that meant something to her at least. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'd like to see, is really planting those seeds to, to move forward. Thank you.
January 25th. Now, um, since we did not have um, legislative, act, um, legislative approval during the session, and um, uh, we need to now have a different strategy for having the educational program and services continue at RMA. So rather than a lease or a conveyance, as what was anticipated to be approved during the legislative session, now we need to um, approve or consider the approval of the operation management agreement between EMED and Rosedale for them to operate the programs and the services at the Rome for next year. So first you need to open it, and then the second resolution will be to have a discussion about the consideration for approval of the operation management agreement. Okay, so if I understand all that, I of EMID and of course our wonderful EMID staff. Good evening and thank you for allowing me a few moments to address any questions that you may have concerning the agreement between District 623 and the East Metro Integration District for the operation and administration of Harambe School for the 13-14 school year. 
I know that you have some questions available to you, and if I'd be very willing to try to address those and answer any other questions you may have, even outside the script. Well, maybe we'll start with the script, uh, Mr. Broderick. Could you uh, begin by taking us uh, through those? We'll do it kind of as an interview, and then just kind of come around uh, the table. Would you start? So, would, would you like me to start with the very first question? Yes, if you want that little introduction there before the question, you can read that. Too. Okay, why don't I read that? The EMID Board of Education at their June 19th meeting will consider approval of the operation and management agreement between the East Metro Integration District 6067 and Roseville Area Schools, ISD 623, for the operation of Arambe Elementary School for the 2013-2014 school years. Okay, now, now you can drop down to the uh, purpose of the, the next. Okay. The purpose of the operations and management agreement is to continue operation of Harambe Elementary School and to provide, an, and that should have been and, yeah. <laughs> an inter-district inter integration educational program for students. And now we get into the actual questions. And I'll start with the first one. Please. What are the current enrollment projections for fiscal year, or school year 2013-14? Thank you for that question. First of all, I guess I'd be amiss if I didn't thank you for your previous vote and tell you how important it happened to be to our district and also especially to the families and students of the East Metro Integration District in Arambe. As for enrollment, I'm very pleased to tell you that uh, the enrollment uh, has remained absolutely steady. Uh, we were somewhat concerned when uh, the legislature failed to act, but our parents are absolutely loyal to Harambe School. I call them our parents. I hope that's okay. And there are, right now, we have 454 enrolled students uh, in a K through 6 plan, and we have about a 10% waiting list uh, of students. Uh, ready to move into slots when available and there are there are students waiting in every at every grade level uh, what are the student racial and ethnic enrollment projections <clears throat> well this year or right now at harambe and i wanted to tell you that uh, harambe looks very similar to a number of schools in our roseville district and i will give an example uh, the makeup this year would be American Indian, 1%, uh, Asian American, 22%, Hispanic American, 12%, African American, 36%, and white students, 29 That's very similar to three of the schools in our district. We are proud to say that we have three schools that are 70-70, and by that I mean 70% free and reduced, 70% uh, students of, of color. Uh, Central Park would be an example uh, that 1% American Indian, 35% Asian Americans, 15% Hispanic, 22% uh, African American, and 27% 20, uh, white. So we think we're in, in a very good place with our enrollment. Uh, the students come from uh, across the entire spectrum of the EMIT families of schools. I think the only two schools that we are, do not have enrollment from are Forest Lake and Spring Lake Park right now. Other than that, uh, the other eight districts are all represented. Okay, next question. What are the grade configurations and average class size? We staff this very similar to the staffing that we have in our school, and the overall staffing K through 6 is 23.8 uh, in the elementary schools. The kindergarten classes uh, are, of course, the lowest, 18.3. Uh, first grade, 21.6. Second grade, 24. Third grade, 22. Fifth, fourth grade, 25. Fifth grade, 26. And sixth grade is the highest, and there has been uh, exceptional interest in that. And right now we are uh, projecting 32 students in class size there. But in our district, anytime there's a class over 30, there is additional TA uh, support provided so that there are extra caring adults in the classroom uh, with classrooms that are a little bit 
above the average. But overall, it's uh, 23.8. What is the equity and integration plan for Harambe to ensure all students have appropriate access to educational opportunities? Thank you. Uh, I'm pleased to say that Rosebell has been working closely with Harambe administration, and I, I would be amiss not to recognize the staff here. Uh, in the event the agreement is ratified, we're prepared uh, with the to develop the or work with the equity and integration plan, and also to make sure that we implement federal and state applications for funding uh, with the MDE to make sure that the funding flows. In the agreement that hopefully you're going to ratify later, states that Roseville agrees to provide regular and special education for all students at Harambe and shall be responsible for determining the curriculum for the educational program. But we are going to stand by the, the, the program in depth and to make sure that we have access to all of our students. Uh, we have our equity plan and also our equity vision in place for Roseville area schools. Well, uh, we intend to keep the same K through 5 curriculum that Arambe currently uses for the 13-14 uh, school year. The sixth grade, in this, for the sixth grade students, Roseville will use the same curriculum used in the K-5 or available, but we're not available, we'll use the current curriculum that Roseville uses right now. Special ed services will be provided. We have uh, broad experience in uh, serving special ed students, and we are also a member of 916, and as manager of this district, 916 will be available to the students who attend here and the services. And again, I have answered that. I guess we offer a complete, uh, in fact, ELL is one of the programs that we're probably have, uh, we, we're very fortunate in that we have uh, extensive experience in working with ELL students. We have over a thousand EL students enrolled in our district right now. We are very fortunate that we uh, butt up against uh, St. Paul as well as the districts around us, but especially St. Paul, we've gained a lot of information and experience. And a lot of the students that have started in the St. Paul EL program have moved into the Roseville. And we've teamed with St. Paul, learned from St. Paul, and we think that we're in an excellent position to provide services for EL students, no matter their home district. Transportation be provided for all students, and please explain that process. Roseville Area Schools, in a contract, you'll notice, has accepted the responsibility for transporting all Harambe students in accordance with the agreement. Roseville has successfully provided interdistrict DSEG transportation for approximately 40% of the students right now. We're experienced in doing that. Uh, right now, we provide uh, the, all the transportation for the Roseville students and also for the North St. Paul Maplewood students who attend the district. Um, our transportation director is very experienced and our carrier is well aware of the demands that it's going to take and we know that we'll be able to uh, make sure our students are picked up and delivered safe and secure to Harambe on time and for school. Uh, and uh, the Department of Education, Minnesota Department of Education, has indicated that they're very willing to uh, work with us on the DSEG funding, and so transportation will be very, very similar the, to the way it has occurred this year. Thank you. At the present time, are all teaching positions filled for the 13-14 uh, school year? And I would just like to add um, what percent of those are current teachers at? You know, we were, we were very blessed that a large number, and, and in fact, I think the vast majority of teachers who were at the Harambe School made the decision to uh, select Roseville as a site. Uh, 
I believe that every teacher that agreed to join our family at 623 uh, has been assigned back to the EMID, uh, to Harambe. And the percentage, I don't know, but I think it's very, very high. I think, uh, in fact, there may be one or two for one reason or another, but uh, less turnover probably than in a normal school within our district. I could get you that information number. Probably somebody in the audience already knows that. <laughs> Along the same line, the present time or the administrative position is still <coughs> Again, we're very blessed that uh, the current principal in this building made the decision to join our team. And we're very pleased to welcome Kathy Griebel as the principal at uh, Harambe for the 13-14 school year. So we think we're great. We were looking for somebody with experience in year-round, somebody that uh, had uh, no new staff and knew their background and who could be better than the person who's already serving in that role. Uh, has the Roseville Area School Board of ISD 623 authorized the expenditures for the operation and management of Harambe for 2014? Well, officially not yet. It is in our budget, and they will be approving that on the 20, hopefully, right, Kitty? Yeah, the 25th. Okay. I got a nod from one, so I know I have one vote there. Uh, <laughs> that's for the date. Oh, it wasn't for the amount. The amount looks pretty good. We do have it in the budget, and right now we're projecting a total revenue of about uh, $3.98 million. The majority of that's going to come in general uh, aid. And then we're also fortunate that we do have referendum dollars that follow our students that attend. And that'll be about 120000 State special ed uh, aid of about 400 and the federal aid of about 400 And that total is about 3.98. Our expenses, we look for uh, the expenses. We've included uh, the utilities of the building. We've included the staffing and everything that would be involved in that, including some one-time expenditures. And that comes to $3.89 million. So we look that it will cash flow. But of course, you know, uh, with the students coming and going, uh, we think it'll be uh, just about a break-even situation. But. I guess we're back to me. What are the plans for reporting to the Minnesota Department of Education and to the EMIT board? Well, uh, the, all the reporting is going to be handled and according to the contract, too. In order for Roseville to receive the funding, it has to flow to EMIT first, and then it is transferred over to Roseville. So all the reporting of student and financial data will really be through, be through EMID officially, but Roseville will take the bulk of the responsibility for recording expenditures, et cetera. And so the funding will flow to EMID. We will submit an invoice, just reverse of what we've done in the past, for the students that attend and the costs that we have, uh, federal expenditures, et cetera. They will be reimbursed to us. The expenditures then will be recorded on our books. And they'll be uh, transferred to EMID. EMID will upload those to the state. So the reporting will be handled jointly. Well, one of the things is, first of all, we surely hope that you will ratify this operation uh, agreement. Uh, I'd like to really give kudos to Superintendent Moore and also to your business official, Thompson, Sherry Thompson. They really did the bulk of the work. And one of the things that we agreed was really to try to make this agreement so that a layperson, a parent, anybody who picked it up would have a very good understanding of what the responsibilities of both parties happen to be. We think it's a fair agreement. It's plain. It's uh, very understandable. And we think it's uh, good for both parties. And we look forward to operating and managing uh, Harambe School for the 13-14 school year. When did the packet, I guess Sherry could answer that. Okay. 
there's a there's a simple some simple revisions that both the Office of uh, Budget and Management and the Minnesota Department of Ed have approved. Uh, they're waiting, of course, for signatures from both boards, and then the signatures will be obtained from uh, both those organizations. So it is you're approving it under, I guess, would be the condition that those signatures are given approval by the Roseville Board and also approval by both of those organizations. Yes, uh, actually two questions. The first one is strictly a question from St. Paul. Right. Historically, St. Paul has uh, probably supplied 50% uh, of the students at Harambe. Is, is that going to be about the same next year? I think it will be about the same. Uh, if this agreement or if the, we continue to operate and manage a school, I would assume it may change over time. But really, historically, that number has held pretty steady. Okay. And then the second question is, with your discussions with other – this would apply to all the other districts besides St. Paul. In your discussions with the other superintendents, uh, what is your going to be your plan in terms of uh, recruitment of kids from – the member districts of EMID to the new Roseville around Well, in the future. In the in the future, I, really, we look at it that uh, the school recruiting. It's. It, I don't think that's going to be a problem for us. I think the school is a very attractive option for anybody who's looking for a year-round option. I think that St. Paul offers a year-round option, but some of our uh, neighboring districts or member districts do not. So this is an opportunity for us to provide something for the larger community that's probably not available. So I don't look for us to be actively going out and knocking on other districts' doors for students. Uh, we believe that parents make the best decisions. Parents will decide where their kids should go. Uh, and not everything is good for every kid. So uh, we think that we're not going to have a problem um, gaining or having enrollment, meeting our enrollment goals in this in this building. One, just one quick follow-up. Then two years or three years down the road, uh, because it, it, my understanding is that next year this is still an EMIT school, mm -hmm. but you're running it for us. Yes, I, I that's our hope. Okay. Yes. Well, that's what I'm going to vote for. In yep. Second. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, two years from now, mm -hmm. it will no longer be an EMIT school. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say too much about that, and there's one reason. I, 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 have, I have some dreams about the future, uh, but I know that we have to visit with our friends down at the legislature, so I surely don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But uh, I think as a district, uh, we look forward, if this is a successful marriage or courtship, as I called it earlier, if this works out well, hopefully uh, that it will be a long-term relationship for the benefit of our communities, all of our communities. Uh, this is not something about, uh, and I know there were comments about Roseville trying to get this, and boy, we're going to get a building. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is about. This is about offering opportunities for kids in our particular area and our community. And because it's located in Roseville, there are going to be probably a number of Roseville kids that will take advantage. But it's going to be open to all. We're an open enrollment district. We always have been. And we look forward to serving those who are interested in attending. No, and I appreciate that answer. And, I, and I'm absolutely assured that that's what your intentions are. But just from a, maybe a legalistic uh, point of view, a couple years down the road, right now a student that lives in St. Paul, for instance, mm -hmm. or lives in wherever, mm -hmm. or the other districts, right. and, and opts to go to either Harambe or uh, Crosswinds is going because this is a joint powers agreement between these ten districts. Mm -hmm. If indeed, and, and we can't predict the future because right. we can't predict what the legislature is going to do from one day to the next, much less what they're going to do I next I found session. that out. Yeah. Uh, but... If indeed uh, there comes a time when this school becomes part and parcel right. of the Roseville School District, mm -hmm. that any child coming from St. Paul or from any other district would have to come via open enrollment? Well, when we first made our uh, presentation, that was that that is the way the state law reads now. But... Take a look at 
uh, North St. Paul, and I'll use North St. Paul as an example. Uh, right now, there, have, there are kids who are new to our community, and as our buses go over to pick up kids, we will we will pick up we will pick up siblings that are there too, and we've continued to do that in North St. Paul and Maplewood, but we can't be in violation of uh, state law either. So, I. It's hard for me. I I don't. I, I'm not really sure right now. It would be that they'd be an open enrollment student, and transportation would be their responsibility. But if we're going to send buses into the district, we would sure open the door and allow students to get on. Thank you. Any other Thank comments you, or questions? Who, who is your bus carrier? A comfort. comfort. Right down the street. Yeah, we, we use a lottery. We have we have uh, three separate magnets that we have. And, you know, the thing that really was surprising to us when people were applying for one of our schools, we were having people who were expecting sign up to get on a waiting list. And so each year is a new year onto, excel, onto itself, and so the lottery is held each year, and everybody has an opportunity. We're a little bit different than most districts in the fact that open enrollment students enter the lottery just like residential students do. They have the same rights, same obligations. Yes. Um, next year, um, depending, of course, again, on what the legislature does, mm -hmm. is the staff in the same position as they were this year with uh, being able to bid into all the various districts? Well, there are staff now. There are, and we're glad to have them. We're very fortunate. They're a talented group of people, and we're keeping them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Byron? John, you had, you had uh, commented on um, teaching positions and administrative positions. Um, I'd be interested in knowing the support staff positions. Um, if those are filled, and, and again, how many of those uh, will be or are present employees? In right. Well, we've also looked into that, and there are some statutory uh, rights that stud that uh, non, I guess it would be uh, clerical, custodial, TAs have. But we're looking to bring them over and to staff the, this building the same way we staff any of our buildings. Now, I don't, uh, right now, all the teaching staff have been uh, filled. But when we take a look at, let's say, the office staff, we're going to need the office staff here, and we look forward to bringing folks from here over. They know this building. They know the families. Um, they can put up with the principal here. So uh, we assume that they're going to join our family, and we'll make that offer to all those for positions that are open. We haven't forgot about our our talented, all of our staff, not just our licensed. Uh, I just want did I hear correctly that you said that uh, when, when there's a, a school that uh, has a waiting list, that open enrollment students have the same, uh, they have no pecking order? I mean, pardon me. You know what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> when, when uh, let's, let's have an example. When, that when if, if Roseville was running this year around school and 600 students applied for positions here, all 600 would go into the lottery. It wouldn't make any difference if they were from Inver Grove Heights or they were from West St. Paul or they were from Roseville. They'd all go into the lottery together, and if we'd pick out 500, it's the 500 we'd pick. The rest then go on a waiting list. Yes, there is. There are there are a couple of preferences that are included in that. One is a sibling preference. One is also a staff member. If we have a staff member teaching in this school, their students want to go here. It doesn't make much sense to have them drive all the way across town to drop their student off if they would like them to attend here. And there's a, a procedure that's put in place that we follow in our dual enrollment, dual language enrollment program, and also in our uh, uh, K-8 school, Parkview. Any other comments or questions? Thank you for being a 
an almost regular guest at the well, thank you. <laughs> table there. That's, I appreciate all the I'm, answers that you've given us. I, I told Board Member Goggins that I was hoping that I would be able to get an evaluation from you that was as good as Superintendent <laughs> Moore. So. Well, now you're stretching. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Vote wisely. Uh, could I get a motion to approve the operation and management agreement with Roseville Area Schools for the 2013-2014 school year? I would very much like, oh, I'm sorry, Byron. <laughs> You make the motion if I can get the second. All right, I would like to make that motion. Thank you. And you? I would love the second. All right, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying, oh, we need a roll call vote, don't we? Okay. George Hefner. Yes. Lori Johnson. Yes. Karen Morgan. Yes. John Roderick. Yes. Lori Swanson. Yes. Katie Goggins. I will abstain. <laughs> Paul Mandel. Yes. Byron Schwab. Yes. Marilyn Forsberg. Yes. Lori Flyer. Yes. Thank you, board members. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the resolution relating to the reduction of non certified positions. Sherry, you going to take that one? Yes, thank you. I don't think I need the mic either. I just have a mommy voice. <laughs> um, you had taken action earlier this year uh, to put our, the teachers on an unrequested leave of absence and then also to terminate the employee of our education assistants. At that time, um, we had postponed um, action on some of our other staff, on some of our other non-certified employees. Uh, thinking that we would have clarity um, and once we had that clarity as far as um, ending with EMID schools and beginning maybe with other organizations uh, that we would take action at that time. Um, we waited. Uh, we have a little bit more clarity and we really just can't postpone um, taking action on these employees. And I know there was a question earlier, I think Byron you had that of Superintendent Tyne um, regarding reemployment. Um, of some of these staff. So unless you take action to um, terminate the employment of these staff, uh, until you do that, rather, they can't exercise rights under statute uh, for openings, um, for instance, at Harambe. So um, we cannot defer this no longer. Uh, so we are asking for uh, approval on this. provides an, uh, technology support for the district. Um, so we are reducing that position by 0.5 uh, with the uncertainties of as far as our facilities. And then there will also be a, a period of time at which we'll consolidate our servers 
Um, so that position will be needed. It's kind of, you know, some of the transition in our operations. That position will um, be needed over the next year, and then likely will the remaining 0.5 will be eliminated at that time. Just, uh, I know that staff, in particular you, Sherry, have done an outstanding job in terms of working with these people, and literally advising them and counseling them in terms of what, what's going to happen in their life because of this uh, this job, job termination. Uh, could you just, and actually I guess I'm asking personally to soothe my own conscience, but I think that the rest of us all would be very interested to, to know if you have any summary statement about, and for this group and for the next group that we're going to work with tonight, about what's the prognosis in terms of, well, sure. quite, quite frankly, are, are they going to land on all fours? Um, currently, uh, well, the statute states that um, if, you are term if your employment is terminated as a result of what is referred to as a withdrawal uh, of the member districts, non-licensed staff uh, can apply for any positions which they are qualified for. So it's not limited to a position which they currently hold. Um, it's, it's based on any position they're qualified for. Those positions are then awarded based on seniority. Um, currently, right now, um, you know, there are some changes as far as um, bargaining agreements, maybe hours. So they're not perfectly aligned. Um, but I believe um, right now with the, with the um, transition uh, with Roseville, there are opportunities for um, five, five or six of the eight. Uh, that are on, on this list. Again, like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean like hours, salaries, benefits, because of course they each have individual or their own agreements. Um, and we're, yeah, we're working with some of the others as well, some of the EAs. Okay. Any others? Have we already acted on uh, Harambe nutrition service workers or were they not any? No, you know, Harambe has been staffed by St. Paul. We only operate food service, so we've just had kind of a management agreement all these years with St. Paul, and it's St. Paul staff. So um, actually now the Crosswinds food service workers, because we haven't had staff over here, uh, will have the opportunity to apply for positions um, at Harambe was under it, Roseville. Was it, is it Crosswinds that has the gardens that, that they're using a lot of Yes, from? yes. Yes. Karen Morehead. Yes. Lori Swanson. I'm sorry, Lori Johnson. Yes. Yeah. So the only um, difference here and why this is a separate motion is the custodians have an organized bargaining unit, so it's actually a layoff rather than a termination. Um, I should mention that both of these groups, the previous uh, uh, individuals as well, have up to 36 months uh, for it to claim any job that's created as a result of the withdrawal. So I'm just going to give you an example should, for instance, crosswinds be empty next year but then it were to open up a year later. Custodians that, for instance, that we've laid off, or clerical for that matter, if there are new positions created um, when that school uh, is in operation, uh, are these employees have, have first rights at that. There again, this is the same as far as based on seniority, whether our custodians, probably many of you are familiar with the fact is a lot of that goes on license, on boiler license. Um, currently, right now, we have eight custodians uh, Roseville will have three positions, and you'll see um, something in, in the board packet uh, when I, we go through the budget um, that our proposal right now, being that we don't have any kind of operational proposal for crosswinds at this time for you to act upon, 
we will be proposing in the budget um, that we reinstate two positions um, for the maintenance of the Crosswinds facility over the next year. Again, it's just in the budget, and then we would take, bring that um, for action at a later date. Um, but it will be included in the budget parameters. Okay. Um, board members have the resolution in their packet. I will introduce the following and move for this adoption. Resolution relating to the adoption to the following non certified positions in areas of operations and maintenance due to the termination of management and operation of the integration magnet schools by East Metro Integration District 6067. Whereas the School Board of East Metro Integration District 6067, due to the termination of the management and operation of the integration magnet schools by EMA, the district finds it necessary to reduce the following non certified positions. We hereby resolve by the School Board of East Metro Integration District 6067 that the following positions personnel be laid off effective at the end of the workday on August 9th, 2013. Dreyer, <coughs> Sullivan, Kenneth Hockley, Thomas Rothbauer, Kevin Kaminsky, Amy Ramirez, Bruce Bowden, Robert Sullivan. Could I get a second to that? Thank you. Any questions, uh, comments for Sherry? Uh, roll call vote for that. Lori Flatter. Yes. Marilyn Farnsworth. Yes. Byron Schwab. Yes. Paul Mandel. Yes. Katie Goggins. Yes. Mark Swanson. Yes. John Broderick. Yes. Karen Morga. Yes. Lori Johnson. Yes. George Evans. Yes. Thank you, John. You made the statement uh, a few meetings back thanking everybody that we're laying off. We don't want to have to lay off people, obviously. Service in some cases since the place opened up. Um, and they certainly deserve more than our, our uh, things. Um, yeah, and, and if I just might add, you know, me, I can't resist saying something, but many times these people in these areas in particular are really some of the unsung heroes in our buildings. Um, and uh, so these are, you know, when John Tyne was talking about Roseville, he used the word family quite a few times. And he's very proud, I think, to use that term to describe local, uh, independent school district 623. And I think that there's no question about the fact that uh, the EMIT community uh, has become a family. And, and these folks were part of it. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Um, adoption of the EMID budget for 2013-14, Sherry? Yes, um, uh, my apologies. You received a, a packet this evening. Um, and again, as we've talked about um, um, more clarity, uh, that's kind of been the theme of our, uh, of our budget. Um, this is a preliminary budget. Uh, obviously, we need to, uh, we are asking you to take action on that so we can um, do business come July 1st. Um, with some of the changes as far as um, going from transferring the governance um, of uh, Harambe to um, the management agreement, we're going to have to reflect things in our budget. We're going to have to reflect some of those uh, both revenues and expenditures. Um, so this, is, again, is, is a preliminary budget. Uh, also in the area of integration, as Superintendent Moore said in, in her uh, report, uh, we continue to uh, develop the programming for next year. Um, the board did uh, actually take action back in January in your budget parameters to forward $30 per pupil unit uh, to EMID. As many of you know, the legislature's kind of changed the formula, and now you're funded based on um, your students of color. Um, I haven't seen the final detailed runs yet as far as the integration category by itself. Um, I'm told that um, the hold harmless in there keeps everyone right about the 90% that no one should receive less than 90% of what you received in the previous fiscal year. Um, but so, you know, there may be a, a little bit of shift within your own districts, and um, we are staying on top of that as well. But again, this is a preliminary budget. We want to go through this with you. 
we'll have more clarity um, as we move forward. I would guess by August, um, uh, by uh, likely the month of August, September, we'll be able to um, provide detail as far as integration programming for next year. Uh, I'm going to kind of I'm going to go to um, the numbers, uh, the uh, number sheet, the preliminary budget. Uh, first, to take a look at the integration revenue or the uh, revenue budget. Uh, again, the numbers that you see for FY14, those are pupil units that uh, they are projecting at Roseville. I've been working with the uh, finance director at Roseville so that our numbers obviously align with Roseville's numbers. Um, so those pupil units are, are what's estimated for uh, Harambe for next year. But then when you get down to the general education revenue, um, you'll see uh, as far as um, for both Harambe and Crosswinds, in addition to the, the dollars that Roseville will generate that will flow through us and then continue on to Roseville, um, there are some costs. You'll see about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars in costs for, cro or I'm sorry, revenues for crosswinds, and there's also um, about a hundred and sixty thousand dollars in there for Harambe. Um, one of the complexities with the year-round calendar is that we generate pupil units because of our attendance in for the 12-13 school year. Because we serve students in 13, 14, we still generate some revenues during that time uh, for the month of July. But we also and we also incur expenses in July and August. And we we receive about 11 percent of our general um, fund or uh, general ed revenues um, in the next fiscal year. But we're still incurring about 16 percent of our expenses in the next fiscal year. And you know, typically, because we just keep rolling forward, you haven't seen um, you haven't seen that really fall out. But now, with the uh, discontinuation of the operation of the schools, we'll see that. And again, we'll provide more clarity as we get into the fall, so you'll be able to see exactly what's Roseville's and what's uh, both revenues and expenditures that are kind of falling out from the change in operations with EMIT. Um, compensatory revenue, uh, again, those will be dollars that are generated uh, that will flow through us uh, that are that will be generated and forwarded to Roseville. It's about five hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. Our special ed tuition revenue, again, the majority of that um, at Harambe will be for next year's operations as far as special ed goes. But there are some dollars there for the wind down of the school per se under EMID. And you'll also see that um, those revenues for crosswinds. Uh, looking at our integration revenue, integration revenue is about $2.2 million. Um, that's up slightly. Again, that's based on the $30 uh, per pupil unit for all students in the collaborative. Uh, so that's up slightly. Uh, federal, um, federal and state aids, uh, these are also very preliminary adjustment or um, projections we're estimating. About $213,000 there. Uh, we're seeing a reduction in our Title I. Um, not so much a reduction, but we had had a large amount of carryover from prior years that were included in the current year budget. So our annual allotment has been about $180,000, uh, but we had some carryover that we spent down this uh, in the current year. Again, there's some uh, looking at the local revenues, um, some miscellaneous revenues. Uh, we are estimating uh, the total revenues to be about $6.5 million uh, for next year. Again, the reduction there in the revenues is the um, uh, ceasing the operations uh, at Crosswinds. The next page, um, as we had talked about earlier, um, will continue... For next year, and we'll, we'll also share this with your business managers, your superintendents, and your transportation directors as well. Um, because as a result of the management contract and dollars having to go through EMID, we'll continue to bill uh, your districts similarly to what has happened in the past, and then we'll forward those dollars on to Roseville. Um, had we totally transferred the governance, uh, those dollars would have gone directly to Roseville. Uh, so we will notify them of that. Uh, on average or median, uh, we collect about $5,400 uh, uh, per student. 
this is an increase. It's a, it reflects the increase in the general education aid of um, $78 per pupil unit. Uh, and again, the, the amounts are listed by, uh, by each district. So going to um, the budget summary on the next page, uh, we are estimating, and I see a preliminary 2012-13, that should be 13-14. Funny how you don't see it when you look at it, but now it jumps out. Um, we are estimating that we'll begin the year with a fund balance of, about, of all funds combined of about $4.1 million. The general, the general fund, the unappropriated, is about just over $2.8 million. Uh, our revenues are esti estimated, excuse me, to be about $6.5 million as far as general fund unappropriated. Looking um, at our expenditures, as I said, we're, we are still in the process of developing uh, the integration uh, the integration budget for next year. So what we have listed here, the first three items, are member services, those are the integration programs. And right now we have them slotted in based on the new legislation, which basically says your administration can be no higher than 10% of costs. So 10% of our total revenues is about $221,000. Our member services, um, student programming, must be at least 80%. So we have 80% is $1.7 million. And again, um, professional development can be as high as 20%. I've got 10% in there because of um, administration uh, for executive director for the positions that will be needed to carry out uh, the work next year. So again, we'll, um, th these, those numbers will shift a little bit as we finalize uh, that integration budget. I also want to point out other district-wide programs. Uh, that's $663,000. I'm going to ask you to flip to the next page because I have that broken out. Um, those are two things. Uh, there, um, two pots uh, are included in there. We have operational costs that are in excess of the 10% admin fee. Um, some of our, uh, and you know, and we can shift how this is. Um, how oh, this is broken out, but right now, for instance, the board salaries, and and again, as we go move forward, this may fit into um, the admin salaries benefits is about thirty five thousand dollars a year. Our lobbyist fees, um, which uh, by the way, our lobbyists worked very hard this year for us, uh, regardless of the outcome of the session. Um, although I shouldn't say that because we did maintain integration revenue. Lobbyist fees cannot be paid out of integration revenue. Those have to come out of uh, general fund. Um, we have some business office costs, um, you know, and fiscal agent fees. Those are very soft, but um, we are guessing over time as schools close and we go from 115 employees to five or six, there won't be a need um, for the entire year for a business office, but there will still be some fiscal functions. Uh, so we have started some discussions regarding um, using one of our districts as a fiscal agent. Have not talked fees, so that's totally um, a guesstimate on our part. <coughs> tech support, as I had mentioned earlier, um, Byron, there's that 0.5 uh, for tech support. Um, our legal costs, as you can imagine, with um, the review of documentation and changes that we're making, legal fees have gone up this year. Uh, in the current year, and we're anticipating that will likely carry over next year. And then we also have um, some services that we use through 916 and will likely continue to use at least early into the next year, but we're bound to that membership fee of $9,000. So those are operational costs. Um, we also have costs that are attributable to the change in operations uh, with the shutdown um, of the schools per uh, again, um, I've, I've got some uh, legal fees in there, um, so we may be able, you know, we may be able to adjust those. But um, with the ceasing of um, of the schools or the operation of the schools, um, you know, there, it, you could revisit the joint joint powers agreement, for instance. Uh, we have um, tech support contract. We actually contract with ties. For our servers, um, so they store everything there, uh, which actually has saved us buying servers. We've, we're just in the ending our second year of that contract. Um, 
so we've got some dollars built in there for that. Um, Reemployment costs, which is basically unemployment costs. Uh, last year, um, we had some layoffs, as uh, you'll recall, or at the beginning of this school year. And our employment costs have increased from about $9,000 to $55,000. So, again, this is somewhat of a guesstimate, but um, it wouldn't surprise me to see um, that more than double for uh, the upcoming year. Because... Yes. What, is, what will be the transition of these employees if they're working through July, but then when the employee, they, they would not qualify for any employment? Right. They're actually paid through August um, because that's the way their salary is spread out. So if they if they can claim a position, there won't there there are no ramifications. However, not everyone will claim a position, and we're also forgetting about the probationary staff. You know that we non renewed. Um, so until we see how you know how that falls out, and again, I expect you know we'll know that um, before the end of the calendar year. Um, lease cancellations. We have some um, some copiers. We've kind of shifted some of those, but uh, there may be some costs. Uh, we've been working with Roseville um, about maybe assuming some of the leases, but we've got some dollars built in there. Uh, also, we have records. We have many records here, and that. EMID, the organization, will still need to be responsible for, and this may not even be attributable to change in operations because many of your districts have gone to an electronic uh, records retention anyway. Um, so we are looking at um, uh, shifting all of our records um, to electronic version. And then the last item there is the Crosswinds Building uh, Maintenance. And I don't have the cost broken out here, but basically what that is is... Um, uh, again, it would be employing two custodians, one in the day and one in the evening. Uh, we do have some EMID staff, some member services staff. Uh, we have three people that are currently housed over there. Um, and then also there's been discussion about districts wanting to use the building for professional development. Should it, you know, should it be mothballed? And obviously the fact for security reasons that we would want to maintain that facility anyway. Uh, we've cut back on the utilities and whatnot, but um, there would still be a cost of operating the building. Yeah, I was looking at that number, and we're, we're going to just retain two. We're just going to retain are two. You anticipating overtime pay? Um, those other positions are people that might be there would not be in the building maintenance. No. And, the, and that also, um, again, I can give you a break out of that, but it also includes some of our utilities. And the fact that we will still be running full steam um, for July and August, for the most part. So that would be included, not just personnel. So yes, it's all all costs associated with that building. Great. Okay. Um, so that totals about four hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. We'll continue to adjust those. Yes. Nope, that estimate um, has actually since changed. Um, we've looked at um, if the building isn't occupied, um, even some of our supplies uh, in, the, in the building, and um, then also the classification of positions that we would need to employ in that building. Um, so again, that's about 455000 Those costs will continue... Um, um, we'll need to continue to keep an eye on those, adjust those as we, you know, garner more information. So the total of those other district-wide costs is about $663,000. Uh, looking at Harambe um, Elementary, you'll see expenses of, ab of about uh, just over $4 million. Again, almost $3.9 million of that will be costs that Roseville will be picking up but we do need to reflect them in our budget because we'll be reporting to the state. So the revenues will will bill them out, the revenues will come in, and we'll forward those dollars to Roseville. Uh, Roseville will um, pay all the expenses, the employees will be theirs, uh, but EMID does have to report um, as an organization uh, what programs uh, they were paid to. 
uh, crosswinds, uh, that $551,000 is basically the payoff of salaries um, and other expenses for the month of July, um, July and August. Uh, we've got student activities in there, and then also our federal um, our federal title programs. Again, the title programs are for programs at Harambe. So we've got general fund expenditures of about seven point seven million dollars. Um, that's spending down the fund balance um, uh, by about one point one million dollars. Again, that total spend down is attributable to kind of all actions of EMID. It doesn't cost any money. Um, for Roseville to operate the schools because those will all be flow through dollars. Um, if there is a, a deficit for Roseville in the operation of Harambe, Roseville assumes that and if there's any kind of a surplus um, then they would benefit from that as well. Um, once we get through the shutdown of school we'll break these things out further so you can, so you can see specifically what those costs are. Uh, looking then at our, at our capita outlay, um, we've got uh, just a few dollars, again, cleanup dollars budgeted in there. Uh, we're looking at a fund balance of about $1.1 million. Uh, we have some expenses in there for technology, uh, for, the member, for member services. Um, I've got noted in the budget parameters at some point um, in the upcoming year, the board will likely want to talk about um, shifting, you know, possibly transferring those dollars back out of capital. Uh, that was set up as deferred maintenance, um, a deferred maintenance re uh, reserve, so you may want to discuss transferring those back into the general fund. Are we responsible for any deferred maintenance here at, Ro here at Marambe once Roseville takes over? Yes, you are. Um, you're not responsible for maintenance, but as far as there's actually language in there that there's um, some, some joint discussion about that. Yes, it would be negotiated, and then, and then also we uh, we will carry the property insurance. Roseville will carry liability insurance. And, and insurance comes out of capital. And insurance actually comes out of general. So what what's a fair? I mean, you said someplace down the road we may want to transfer. What if that road is very far down? How much can we save? Always go. We, we can if the hole's in the roof and we have nothing in capital. We can take it out of. You can take it out of general because this these are dollars that you've self designated. It's not like in a traditional district where the state says um, that you know these are capital dollars or deferred maintenance. These are dollars that you've set aside, so you could take it out of your general fund. And then also, we're just we do an annual roof study. Um, our buildings are are in excellent shape. Not to say that something. I would say if something is going to occur, it would likely be something catastrophic that maybe there would be an insurance claim, although you you know you could have a problem with a boiler or something, but you could take that out of your general fund. So um, your chair, why wouldn't we do that sooner rather than later? And, and actually, you could do that. You could do that sooner. Okay. Um, you know, as we've kept that before looking forward as far as roof replacement. Um, and, and if that's the direction that you're heading, or that we're heading, as far as um, not continuing the operation of schools, you, I would suggest and recommend that you transfer that to your general fund. Um, and then also the same thing as far as food service goes. I'm waiting. There's been a little bit of um, confusion at um, the state and getting an answer there. Uh, I also believe, but I'm waiting for some written confirmation. Uh, that you would be allowed to make that one-time transfer uh, and transfer the food service dollars um, from the food service fund into your general fund is, is my understanding. I just would like to see something in writing. There's been a little bit of turnover in food nutrition services. Um, so basically, uh, the re preliminary budget uh, is estimating a drawdown on all funds combined of about $1.1 million, and we are projecting um, we would end the fiscal year 14 uh, with just under $3 million, uh, all funds combined. Again, that's preliminary uh, based on what we know right now, so uh, we will continue to update you as things evolve. Motion and second, then we'll discuss this.
this all, yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the proposed EMID 6067 budget for 2013 14. Second. Kitty? Second. Second. Byron? Comments or questions? Call. Question. Um, not to jump ahead, but I see that we have the closing of an executive director position. Mm-hmm. And my question would be first of all, would that position be applicable only to Karambi? And the operation of EMID itself, I think, exclusive of Crosswind. And if so, where does that show up? Um, actually, that's part of, that is under the member services, under the administration. Um, that basically is, if you look at the um, amended budget summary, under, um, under expenditures, member services program administration, that would include the cost of an executive director um, and administrative assistant. It's about $221,000. And that would really be for, um, well, the board will decide what that position looks like, but whether it be to... Um, direct the governance, and then also the programming uh, for our member services. Um, on the uh, amended budget summary, the two hundred see the $221,000 there under thirteen fourteen. That would include the cost of, the, um, of that office. And um, another, one more question, Mr. Chair. Um, does the district actually have someone on retainer that's sole job is the lobbyist? Um, actually, um, we do, and it's not that uncommon with the integration districts, and actually they do the lobbying. They also work with AMSD. Um, they do the lobbying on behalf of the integration district and your individual districts. So we pay for, right, that's correct. Excuse me, I know. That, it was an eye-opener for me, too. And then I've seen some of the magic they've worked. Yes, that it is. <laughs> That's why Sherry's been blowing your nose for three months. <laughs> I think so too. I was just going to point out. I was just going to point out that Sherry Thompson, Sherry Gerton Thompson, is a product of the St. Paul Public School. Thank you very much. And she proud of it. Strong resolve to have to put up with you. And she survived certain teachers. <laughs> Any other comments? Um, how how are, how is the the uh, line being drawn, especially in carryover funds for next year? What might be carried over from Roseville and what might be carried over from Union? Okay, is that being different? so really, it's all all of the revenue from Roseville is driven by pupil unit, and for each enrollment record, it's 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 actually very clear the way that we report it. And I get a report out that says, for instance, um, if we have a first grader this year and they continue on to second grade, uh, so we get. 89% of the revenue, and it, it lists right out there because they base it on the number of membership days that that student's in. 0.89% is paid from 12-13. The student continues on next year. We also get a report then for next year that it, it breaks it out into two separate enrollment records. So it shows enrollment from July 1 through August 1. So I see the pupil, um, what's generated there, and then it shows that anything after... August 1, or starting September 1, it, again, it's it's broken out. It's a little tedious, but it's it's very clear. So that's the good thing, is because any kind of separation, and when I say separation from one school year to the next, even though it's in the same fiscal year, it will generate two records then. So it, it's a little putsy, but um, it's very easy to track. It's very clear and straightforward. So anything coming in to us, Yes, if it's anything coming from the other from the ten collaborative districts under the thirty dollars group 
people that we receive would stay with EMID for that's correct. Services. That's correct. The integration revenue is uh, stays. Anything what we have in our in our present fund balance, or if we're saying that we would have an ending fund balance at the end of next year of three million. That stays with the name it. And we'll, we'll develop a model. I just haven't had a lot of time to think about it to provide, so that's a little bit more transparent as well. I'm sure I have a detailed question. No. I apologize if I have used my list in this way. I'm just trying to digest a lot of things at the same time. Why does the Harambe basic revenue, the sales revenue, go down so much? Or go up so much in the special education revenue? Um, the, the special education revenue goes down because um, Roseville has basically, I took the special, because it's, special ed is based on your actual expenditures. And um, I think maybe some of it is because we contract services through 916 under the operation at Roseville. You're not paying a mark, probably not paying a markup, so the expenses are less uh, for one thing, so then the revenue is less. As far as the basic skills, um, we've seen a big increase in uh, free and reduced, and then also English language learners. So that really increased uh, those dollars for next year. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with me through that. Yeah, that was good. Thanks. Uh, next action item is the approval to post an executive director position. Yes. Um, I would like to uh, have your authorization to post this position so that we can uh, begin to begin to see who may be attracted to the position. Uh, in addition, I would like to committee so that we can um, uh, discuss um, the, exec the functioning of the executive director for the 13-14 school year and beyond. Um, so it would be my exit and that person's entrance. And so um, I would like to schedule that at some point in time and send out a few dates so um, that you could be with, with me um, in order to have that opportunity for your discussion. But um, because of the time sensitive um, time sensitivity here, it would really be nice if it could be posted and then we could begin to see who is the mark around
together, quite frankly, because you know the requirements of, of it going forward. Um, but it's a simple motion tonight to be able to move that to get it started. I mean, that would be my interpretation. And, and then I guess the follow-up question to that, too, is, um, as the superintendent uh, was stating, right now we have no, no element here for the schools. So we're making an assumption that you will continue to help support that or we'll go to John or Dr. And Dine then, or in some way. That's you know, why I would like to talk to the personnel committee so that we provide the board with adequate support and we provide the school process with adequate support <coughs> as we move forward. But, um, Yeah. 
saw it as authorizing this board to move forward to work toward that end. Mm. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't it's talking the same thing, only I, I saw it as the end, you saw it as a process towards the end. Right, the right. beginning process. This is a different, this is a change for us. And, and to me, that's what this motion is to be able to move forward in this direction. And with, with the expectation that we would meet very soon with the superintendent to formalize this. But I didn't, I wasn't caught up in this two page document. At okay, because when I read it, it said process. to post the executive director position, not yeah. to talk about it or give approval to it. It said, oh, well, so we're approving the posting of mm -hmm. the position. And with that, I thought the posting would require some requirements on that person who can apply to the posting. Sure. And with the time element, that would be a good idea. If anyone saw any red flags or anything. Oh, we, we can't, I mean, it's okay with me to, if you decide to approve of the posting, that's that's fine. That authorizes, then the award agrees to that posting of the executive director's position. And then if your preference is to get together to talk about this particular two-page document and uh, do any tweaking as needed, if we can do that before the end of the week, then we could actually get it posted so that it is uh, in the in the in the way that would be most desirable and directed by the committee. I can deal with that. I'm not going to be able to, by the end of this week, that I mean, we're talking about on next week and the end of this week. I can't do it. For this particular two-page document, would you be open to a, um, like, a phone conference call? And, you know, look at any tweaking that you may see or any questions that you may have, we could do a conference call to finish this, and then we could meet to discuss any uh, further items. I, I'm fine with that, but I'm fine with the less detail. With this, this is to me the vote is to be able to move forward with the executive director position. So whatever would make anyone with reservations comfortable, I would be fine with. Ready for 
you can look at July 10th. And because of, again, the timing here, uh, we have the week of July 4th, which is not a time, a week, to have a board meeting. So the earliest we perceive we would be able to have a board meeting would be the 10th of July, which means we need to have get a packet out to you the last week of June. So um, my suggestion is, because we still would have the discussion in July about the Perfect Center for Arts Education's desire to um, have an educational program at Crosswinds and for the board to have an opportunity to look at the um, contract and have an opportunity to discuss, review and discuss, um, I would suggest, I would, I'm proposing that on July 10th, we have a special board meeting beginning at 5.30 that will tend to be the first hour of that board meeting as a work session because all of us will need to review together um, the information that would be required of you to make an informed decision um, on July 10th, um, if that is at all possible. And if not, we would have to then have that as a work session and approve other business items and then have scheduled another special meeting to move forward with acceptance or not of the proposal. So July 10th is the first request for a special board meeting, and I, I hate to be so confusing about it, but because um, I don't have the document before me, um, and you won't have any document before you until the end of June at earliest, or maybe not even until July 10th, um, it would be important for us to have an opportunity together to review, discuss, have Perfect Center for Arts Education representation here, for you to also have the opportunity of doing the same type of interview that you just did this evening with Roseville and uh, then make a decision at that evening or hold another special meeting in order to make your decision. But it's an important meeting to have for information that you will need to make an informed decision. Kind of beat that one up. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. Sorry. Uh, could I get a motion to approve a special board meeting for July 10th, 2013 at 5.30? Marilyn moved. Kitty seconded. Any discussion or questions? Paul? Um, as the new kid on the block for just tonight, um, is, um, do you not need both options on the table? Tonight's was clear because it was an assumed Roseville solution, but Perfect is one <coughs> that was a result of a very tight decision versus uh, uh, South Washington County School District. So I'm just wondering, does this not presuppose if you're just getting one side of the discussion, if you're having a group work session, to have both? I don't know. I just put that out there. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. So is the 
Perfect Center uh, interested in moving forward with an integration yes. school as it's currently being yes, run? Yes, that is correct. And is that a long-term commitment? No, this is, again, the same type of situation where it's a, uh, we would have an operation management agreement designed should the board elect to entertain that um, with Perfect Center for the Arts, it would be one year because it all needs to go back to the legislative session for the, um, uh, the session that begins in January, or excuse me, in February, um, because both entities need to go through what's called the bonding bill during the next session in order for it to have uh, official or formal conveyance. Marilyn? I think so.
all three things, but otherwise I don't think that we've answered that question very well as a board as to what our intent is in conveying that. Well, according to your legislative session, it needs to be a, um, a program for which the building was built. That's an interdistrict integration educational program. Wouldn't necessarily be the program that's currently in it. Yes? No. An interdistrict integration magnet program, so it would need to have um, that interdistrict integration component to it. Integration, I understand the interdistrict, but is that simply open enrollment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be providing opportunities for students from member districts to attend there, as they have been.
and I know you've been in touch with Keith, and yeah. so I, I appreciate that. But as far as our board um, and, and that type of discussion, we, we would, I know, like to still continue to think about this in terms of what could be our reality. Sure. I think the problem with clarity is in the legislative action, because when we were making our decisions, the building had to be used for an educational purpose. ta -da, Perfect. Done. Now all of a sudden they found this little piece that said it has to be an integrated mode or whatever. And so that changes the purpose of what was proposed at the beginning because certainly either one was going to be serving an educational purpose. The next thing that I thought changed was the MMB saying now we couldn't make the decision until after the legislative session. But that was not the case before. That was the first time that they had done that. And so it's really hard to be clear when they change. It has been difficult to be clear. Sure, you have a document? Um, I would like to add, add something throughout this operation, the development of this operation and um, management agreement. Um, speaking of MMB, uh, we have had a few hurdles that we've had to clear. Um, one which we were just made aware of the other day, which is a 10 page checklist. And in that checklist, without legislation, in that checklist, we had to demonstrate in the agreement, we had to cite the section number. Um, that the government program would continue to operate. And in this case, it's the inter-district magnet school. So it's become at least clear to me in the last few days that MMB would not sign off on a management agreement. I'm not talking about the legislation, but a management agreement for the upcoming year unless it were to include um, an inter-district integration magnet because there isn't any legislation giving them authority to do otherwise. Does that make any sense? That has become clear to me only in the last two days. Uh, again, another, you know, just something that we need to go on. Good so question. When you say would include, is that solely includes that, or is that as a part of an uh, overall operation, which could also include so, IB so that has to be the intent of the program, and they even asked about the um, if it's in use in part of the facility, all of this facility. They get very specific in their questions, and I wasn't aware of that until we submitted the appointment. Yes. So, as the true novice to the board, for, like, for Amy here, <laughs> what I'm gathering from this whole situation, on a very basic level, is that Amy is looking for the opportunity to entertain a vendor, a subcontractor, who can come and operate the facility in its current standing as of this current school year in order to maintain a building. EMA is going to have to pay for this building one way or the other, either as an empty building or as a building that's still going to suit students in its current form for the upcoming school year. So the decision now, within a very short period of time, is whether or not you entertain seeing someone who can come in, operate it within its current parameters, and then push it out one year, give yourself the additional time to look for legislative backup and clarification as to for future uses for that building facility, correct? Well, <coughs> summarized. Okay. And then we as a board are going to have to get together again next year to work on this transfer of government. Oh, for both of the building. It continues until May of 2014. Yes, yes. So if, I assume, if the even board is not Please, with the operation and management from the North Coast School District, we could vote to not transfer governance to them. Or if we were not pleased with the government management and operation of the Perkins Center, we could choose, that would be our decision, whether we want to transfer. South Washington come and come, we could come in next year with a wonderful proposal that would meet all the requirements of the legislature, and we could say we want to transfer governance to them. So I feel like much of our discussion is is not essential at this point because we need to we would like to do something in the Crossroads School um, that at this point would continue the programming that's there. Yes, um, given I mean both well, I can understand all the points and especially what you just said about. They have to continue that program that does that and only that. Um, I think then that that behooves Perfect to not only answer the questions that you asked tonight, but to also answer the question: How do they fill the school? Because one of the main 
major issue that brought a lot of this to the head was that uh, phosphorus was not being used to pass it had fallen off dramatically. And I mean, you don't want responsibility for running a school half empty. What's that? Well, again, I think many of the questions that we're posing for ourselves, I think, here tonight are, you know, hopefully going to be the questions that come up in the here on yeah. July 10th, if we agree to have a meeting at 5.30. <laughs> so, all those in favor of having a special board meeting on July 10th. One 20. last piece of discussion. <laughs> Would it be feasible to have the board meeting at Crosswinds rather than at Harambe since we're dealing primarily with the future of Crosswinds? Uh, would we consider that? I'm going to kind of just rewrite this proposal <laughs> to include that. Uh, uh, can we get a vote on approving a special board meeting for July 10th, 2013 at 5.30 at Crosswinds. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. This is Jim. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, just a point of clarification. Yes. Work session decreased at, at 530 with the board meeting to follow? Of yes. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Ha, 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 ha. 
Oh, yes. I'm, you know, George W. Bush said he was the uniter. I'm the adjourner. <laughs> <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second.